This is the first video of the series of tutorials that we have created for the Virtual Fly Brain site. This video will introduce you to the main viewer page of the site, show you what tools we have developed for this page and how to use those tools for querying the Drosophila anatomy in the underlying expression database. The viewer page is logically divided into several functional areas. Those are the main menu at the top, the toolbox on the left hand side, the interactive anatomy tree and search box on the right hand side, then at the bottom here we have our term info box, and down the middle there is a section viewer. So let's have a look at each of those in turn. Uh, the main menu really there is not much to talk here about. It's pretty self-explanatory. The only thing I would really like to have a look now in relation to the viewer is the screen resolution menu. It allows you to switch between the three modes of resolution. One is really high, that gives you a lot of space, but requires a big screen. Then the low resolution one is specifically designed for the laptop screens. But typically you would use the best fit that automatically adjusts all the panels on the viewer so they fit into your browser window in the best way. Now here we have the toolbox and it contains a set of tools that allow you to rotate the image, zoom it in, zoom it out and pan around it. Here is a quick detour here on how the images are produced and what it is all about. On the server side the stack is represented as a 3D model and what we have in the section viewer is just a slice through the stack and these two-dimensional slices sent to you as a viewer. Okay, um, so the first tool I would really like to have a look at is the navigation window which is over here while developing the interface, we deliberately tried to mimic the behavior of Google Maps. So the navigation window does exactly what a similar element on Google Maps does. It shows you the area of the image that is visible on the section viewer. In case if your entire section doesn't fit into the section viewer. And just like in Google Maps, you can either drag this uh, grayed out rectangular area in the navigation window, or you can simply click, grab and drag in the main window. Next tool is the magnification tool. And it does exactly what it says on the team. It allows you to set the resolution at which you look at your section. And you can go from really tiny one to a really detailed and even pixelated one. And again, just like for the navigation tool, you can use your mouse wheel or scroll on your touchpad to zoom it in and out. Okay, for now I'll set it to about 1 to 2 so we have the view of the entire section just because it looks nicer. And the next two tools I'm going to talk about are the distance tool and the rotation tool. But before I touch those, I'm going to make our section slightly more interesting by adding colors. As I mentioned on the server side, our reference stack is represented as a 3D volume. So within this 3D volume, we have defined known neuropeel domains. And these neuropeel domains can be then presented on your main viewer. And because those domains are defined as 3D volumes, whenever you rotate your stack or you change your current section plane, we still can produce domains. This allows you to explore spatial relationships between individual domains in real 3D, which I'm going to demonstrate in a second. Okay, the next tool is the distance tool. And what it does, it changes how far the current section plane is from the middle of the stack. So 
so you can see how section planes change and again as you can notice here as I drag the distance control here the main view doesn't update this is done deliberately because up uploading the whole stack to the client is really costly operation in terms of the bandwidth and so we used this navigation window as a as a quick preview and to I'll, s I'll just set the distance into the zero now just because it's nice section here and the next tool is the rotation tool it allows you to rotate your stack in 3D so for starters I'll just try to look at it from this side like this okay so we are now looking at our stack sort of from the left hand side now I can further use the next control to also look at it as if we're looking from the top of the stack and I can also additionally flip it around so sometimes you can end up with a pretty confusing view so you don't even know at what angle you're looking at your stack so we have provided these three buttons that stands uh, for transfers sagittal and frontal views the final remaining control on the rotation tool is this fixed point button I'm gonna show you what it does using a simple example let's say I want to explore mutual relationship of an optic lobe and the adult central complex on the transverse view I can see them both at the same time and I can figure out how they especially relate one to another no problem at all now I presume that if I flip it into the sagittal I'm still gonna be able to see them both oops that appears not to be a case the reason is that the current section plane passes through the stack somewhere around here and we want it to pass somewhere over here to do this we use this fixed point tool I just hit this button a tiny dialog pops up and it allows me to assign a new fixed point I'll pick it somewhere here close this window for now and now if I flip it into sagittal I can see them both on the same section nice and easy like this right I'll reset it all to the default view and show you the final bit and the last component here is this reload image button what it, it is needed for is sometimes when you rotate your stack too much especially on a slow line like an, on a wireless your image might appear broken up as if it's tiled up in well basically it's, it's messed up you just hit the reload image and it makes sure that the image is loaded properly now that we have familiarized ourselves with the tools for manipulating the 3d stack we can add the tree manipulation and make our exploration of the 3d stack more interesting